but it's love. A couple months ago, I asked some of my friends what love was to them. Most of them said it was an indescribable feeling, that someone was always there for you, that you were never alone. Most of the people that walk this planet today have different definitions of love. As to this point, I was curious as to whether there was a way to define or experiment love. That's when I came across Harry Harlow and his findings of love and affection. It really made me think about my relationship with my mom. And that's when the journey of learning about this dedicated man and his findings began. Harry Harlow was a scientist who was intrigued upon the topic of love and affection. He believed that the behavioral view of mother-child attachment was an inadequate explanation. Harlow was known most for his famous wire monkey experiment. In the experiment, Harlow gave baby rhesus monkeys the choice between a soft terry cloth mother with no food and a wire mother with food from an attached baby bottle. The baby monkeys spent significantly more time with their cloth mother than with their wire mother, which proved that love and affection is just as important than the need for food. Harlow made a great choice when it came to experimenting with monkeys because of the similar resemblance to humans, even when it comes to learning and applying strategies or rules to situations that help them solve problems. Harlow's experimentation showed many things, such as the fact that love is vital for normal childhood development. Harlow also revealed that the long-term devastation could lead to psychological and emotional distress. For this research experiment, I have gathered information including data, graphs, and even conclusions made by the very young famous Harry Harlow. I have used all these elements to help determine the needs of our society today. What is it that mothers in our current society need to know when it comes to the mother-child bond? And how did Harlow's work contribute to today's society? My hypothesis is that Harlow's work is most beneficial to teen or young mothers. As of today, there are many teen and young mothers struggling to give their child what they need. Sometimes the source of the problem could be that the mother simply does not know what she needs to be doing in order to create that special bond with her child. If a mother is not careful enough, she could eventually lead her child into having attachment disorders. A child with insecure attachment or an attachment disorder doesn't have the knowledge and understanding that it is necessary to build strong relationships. However, with much hard work and time, patience, effort, and love, it is possible to treat, fix, and deal with attachment difficulties. An attachment disorder could be occurring if a young child tries to get attention by misbehaving, a young child is mistreated or abused, the child never knows what to expect because sometimes their needs are met and sometimes they aren't, the infant or young child is away from his or her parents, or the parent is emotionally unavailable because of their own needs and such. If our society should learn anything from Harlow's work, it should be that creating a bond at an early age is a must. Most of the problems with children are that they do not receive enough bonding, attachment, love, and care from a person at an early age. Once children become older, it is harder for them to adjust and try to create bonds, especially if they had one before with a loved one. The key to understanding Harlow's work is analyzing his data relating to his rhesus monkeys. This graph shows the time the baby monkeys spent on their wire and cloth mothers. As you can see, the monkeys tended to choose the warmth and comfort of the cloth mother, which promotes the concept that love is vital to a relationship. Harlow also conducted several other experiments to prove that a mother-child bond is necessary. In this particular experiment, he placed the rhesus monkey in an unfamiliar environment, some with their cloth mothers and others with none. The results showed that the monkeys with their cloth mothers felt safer to explore the room. He also set up a control experiment with monkeys who have never been around the cloth mothers. In fact, those monkeys were more afraid exploring the room with the presence of the mother. This resulted in screaming, crying, and rocking in a corner. This contributes to showing that a bond helps make a child stronger. Another experiment Harlow conducted was to see how well the rhesus monkeys could perform in a puzzle. The monkeys who had the cloth mothers with them seemed to have better results in solving the puzzle. This experiment of his shows how much a child with a bond or without a bond is affected. In conclusion, Harlow's work could not only be beneficial to young mothers, but also changing orphanages, adoption agencies, social service groups, and child care providers to a more suited environment. The reason Harlow's work could benefit young mothers is because they are still trying to balance everything in their life, schoolwork, social life, and tending to the baby. They also have many jobs and responsibilities placed on them, including trying to distinguish right from wrong. Harlow's studies also showed that the need for closeness and affection goes deeper than a need for warmth. Teen moms should also understand and connect with the child in all ways possible, showing that the hypothesis made earlier is indeed relevant. Harlow has affected so much of our society today, thanks to his passion for experimenting with attachment and his little monkey friend.